Malaysia has pledged to reach net zero emissions by 2050. But here's the reality. Solar helps, yet it's intermittent. Gas and coal keep emissions high. If we are serious about net zero while energy demand rises, nuclear is not just another option. It is the only technology that can deliver clean, large-scale 24-7 power. You want to do this in a way that is clean and at least 24-7. You don't really have too many choices. Malaysia's demand is growing quickly. New industries, foreign investment, and data centers are driving consumption. It is demand energy from artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. The data center is huge for, uh, to run their chip uh, competing time as well as the cooling. Uh, they, we have to run pump and so on, so the energy demand needed. In Sabah, blackouts are already concerned. Without bold choices, the country risks higher electricity costs or even nationwide shortages. Untuk Semenanjung khususnya dan juga Sabah, disebabkan apa yang diperlukan sekarang ini ialah energi yang sumbernya tetap. On safety, think of it like air travel. Some fear flying, yet it is among the safest ways to move. Nuclear is similar, a highly regulated technology with decades of proven operation. Here's the scale of its efficiency. A uranium pellet the size of your fingertip can power an average Malaysian home for more than a year. To get the same amount of energy, you need a truckload of coal, a full tanker of oil, or hundreds of gas cylinders. Globally, 32 countries operate nuclear plants with about 50 more preparing programs. In ASEAN, the Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Thailand are already moving in this direction. We've been having many conversations with colleagues from, from Malaysia, from Philippines, from Indonesia, from Thailand, from Vietnam, from Singapore. Malaysia cannot set high climate goals and stand still while others advance. Uh, 2050 target, you know, 2050, 25 years away, if you do nothing, you know, if you keep emitting carbon. Waste management? The industry has managed it with a closed cycle system for over 80 years. There is no other energy source that can tell you uh, that every single gram of used material waste that has produced throughout the 80 years of its history around the world is all properly managed. It is at its interim storage or we are recycling it and it is uh, safely and securely uh, managed and separated from the, from the environment without any impacts. On viability, nuclear plants can run for up to a century, support industry, create skilled jobs, and provide round-the-clock electricity. For example, in Finland, when we added Okinoto 3 into the grid, the cost of electricity in Finland decreased by 75%. Malaysia is being presented with three main pathways. A full-scale 2,000 megawatt plant with two reactors, enough for about 2 million homes, roughly the whole of Penang. Small modular reactors suited for hubs like Pengerang in Johor or Samalaju in Sarawak. Floating nuclear units ideal for islands such as Labuan or Langkawi. On partnerships, Russia's Rosatom is already delivering projects in Bangladesh, Turkey and Egypt. The U.S. is promoting small modular reactors through its first program, a 1-2-3 agreement with the Philippines and Project Phoenix to convert coal plants into SMRs. Beyond technology, awareness and public trust are critical. Uh, very serious conversations need to be taken place with the public, with, with, with all the stakeholders in the community to ensure that everybody is well aware and understands what this means. And only then you move forward. In Russia, nuclear education begins in kindergarten and continues through youth programs. Malaysia has studied nuclear since the 1970s. What is needed now is not hesitation, but action. In RMK 13 recently, I think Prime Minister mentioned the target of 
policy. It's a policy decision. Kita dah melantik my power sebagai DPO yang akan membuat kajian keseluruhan. Paling cepat dan dilaksanakan ialah 10 tahun yang akan datang. Danish Fajereza reporting from Moscow, FMT.